Hello again, local search friends. Welcome to another episode of the WhiteSpark Weekly. Uh, today I want to talk to you about how to handle practitioner listings on Google My Business and in your citations. So I had a different topic in mind, but uh, I uh, need to give a shout out to Ali Margison. Uh, she asked a question on Twitter, which kind of encouraged me to uh, cover this topic a little bit better. So she was asking about practitioner listings and whether or not a doctor can have multiple listings at different practice locations. And it kind of uh, encouraged me to do this White Bark Weekly on, uh, on that topic of practitioner listings. I also need to give a shout out to Joy Hawkins, who's written an incredible post about this. Uh, it's posted on the White Spark blog. So she wrote a post uh, about best practices for practitioner listings on Google My Business. This post uh, covers a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover in here. So uh, we'll link to that in the show notes. Uh, uh, definitely recommend that you look at that as well. So to get started, you know, what, what is a, a practitioner listing? And we can look at that Look at what Google's definition is here. So Google says that uh, a practitioner listing is an individual practitioner is a public facing professional, typically with his or her own customer base. So this would be uh, practitioners like doctors, dentists, lawyers, uh, financial planners. I think I wonder about the concept of taking that further. You know, you don't see a lot of that in, in these spaces, but uh, you know, psychologists, of course, uh, physiotherapists, uh, even hairstylists. You never really see practitioner listings for hairstyles, but it could be a, a tactic and an opportunity for uh, various kinds of businesses, financial consultants, or I don't know, SEO consultants. It, it's a it's an interesting idea of taking practitioner listings to another level. Um, so there are all, all kinds of possible practitioners as long as you follow this particular guideline. Uh, he or she operates in a public facing role. So support staff shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't have their own listings. Um, and, or, and he or she directly is directly contractable at the verified location contactable uh, at, during the stated hours. So this generally means you're going to have a um, separate office line or separate desk line for the practitioner. At the, at the stated location. So if you follow those guidelines, you know, a lot of hairstyles would really fall under that. It's an it's an interesting opportunity for hairstyles, I think, to think about practitioner listings. I'm curious to hear in the comments, you know, some people that know more about this than me, if, uh, if that's completely out of the question, if I'm off my rocker with that idea. All right, so now you know what practitioner listings are. There's a specific edge case that uh, often comes up that I want to talk about. That is the idea of the solo practitioner. So solo practitioner is, for example, a dentist where it's a dental clinic, but there's just one dentist there. So let's say it's, uh, it's Appleby Dentistry, and there's only one dentist there. His name is Joe Appleby. So in that case, Google's recommendation is to just have one listing. It's called a solo practitioner listing. And uh, what you should do is you should name that listing in this format right here. I'm going to highlight that on the page here. This is from the Google My Business Guidelines. So uh, you would name it Appleby Dentistry colon Dr. Joe Appleby. That, that would be the recommendation from Google. Um, and so the question is, if you already have two practitioner listings, um, or if you already have two listings, one for the practice, one for the practitioner, but you happen to be a solo practitioner, should you merge those listings or should you not? Uh, if both listings are ranking, so you've got your practitioner listing ranking for, let's say, dentist, and you've got your practitioner listing ranking for dental clinic, if both of them are ranking, I would probably leave it alone and uh, not do anything. Uh, if one is ranking and the other one is not, then that might be a good case for consolidating your listing. So you would merge them through Google My Business. Uh, the best way to do that is to just contact them through at Google My Biz on Twitter uh, and just ask for some support there and then you'll get the US support team to help you out. Um, but <clears throat> the benefit of merging those two listings would be you'll consolidate your reviews and you'll consolidate potential ranking benefit from that. So that's my recommendation with uh, solo practitioners. Um, here's the next question, which is if you, if you don't already have practitioner listings, should you create them? And so 
I think it depends. Uh, there's there's a couple scenarios. If it's a practice where the practitioner is a like a fixture of that practice, like a, a, an owner or a, a regular fixture of that practice, then I would say yes, you should create the practitioner listings. It's actually an opportunity to rank for additional terms. So imagine it's a medical clinic and you are an orthopedic surgeon who is one of the, uh, uh, the primary uh, associates at that medical clinic, then you have, you have the ability for the clinic to rank for a uh, medical clinic, and you have the ability for you, the doctor, to rank for orthopedic surgeon. Um, the, big, the big thing with practitioner listings is to diversify the categories. You don't want to have your practitioner listing competing against the practice listing. So make sure that they each have a unique primary category in, in Google. So uh, what if the practitioner happens to work at multiple clinics? So they, they, uh, they're an orthopedic surgeon at a sports clinic, and they're also a family doctor at, uh, at a walk-in clinic. So I have an example here. So there's this doctor in Edmonton, uh, Dr. Randy Gregg, who is also Edmonton famous because he uh, he's, he won five Stanley Cups in, in the 80s and 90s. He was, he was part of the uh, great Wayne Gretzky Messier run, and so now he's a doctor, and uh, he's, he's an orthopedic surgeon. He actually works here at the Edmonton Sports Institute. So this is a great example. So we've got the Edmonton Sports In Institute would rank for sports med medicine clinic. Um, and then he doesn't actually work at this walking clinic. I'm just fishing for an example. But we've got this medical clinic, and let's say he also worked there at the walk-in clinic. So Randy could have two, two additional practitioner listings. He could have one at the address of the Edmonton Sports Institute where that practitioner listing was for uh, orthopedic surgeon, and they could have one at the walk-in medical clinic where his listing was for just doctor. So that's an opportunity for uh, basically casting a wider net and the ability to rank uh, for more, more terms. Um, next up, uh, <clears throat> what if the, uh, the practitioner listing is ranking, but you want the practice listing to rank? This is something I covered actually in the first White Spark Weekly. Uh, we had a very similar case, it was that exact case, where the practitioner listing was ranking, and the phone calls were going to the practitioner's desk. So they didn't want that. So uh, what we did is we changed the phone number on the listing to be the primary uh, office line. And then we put his uh, desk line in as the secondary number. So that was one way to sort of mitigate that. Um, and then eventually we even changed the name of it. So that was one way to get around it. You could also um, try to minimize the practitioner listing. Um, doesn't seem like a smart idea if it's already ranking, but uh, if if you wanted to, if, if you have practitioner listings that are competing with the practice listing, you could try to minimize them by stripping out the URL and putting in a, a crummy category so they're not really directly competing with the practice. Um, <clears throat> what should you do about your citations? All right, so you've got these different listings. Let's look at this Randy Gregg example. So if he's got all of these uh, different um, practitioner listings, should you build citations for those practitioner listings? Uh, if you want them to rank, I think you should. Uh, you should definitely add them on the very key sites for the industry. So most of these practitioner situations have uh, industry sites like in the legal space, there's Avo or uh, lawyers.com. In the healthcare space, you've got sites like RateMD and HealthGrades. Those sites are actually specifically designed to list practitioners, not to list uh, businesses or practices. So uh, definitely that's your first line of citation work. You want to make sure you're listed on all of those. And then there's also the uh, um, sites like Google, Bing. Uh, I'll post a list in the uh, in the list down, down below in the post. But there's Google My Business, Bing, Apple Maps, uh, Info Group, you can add practitioner listings, Factual, Yelp, Yellow Pages, MapQuest, uh, Manta, Kudzu, and City Search. So those are some of the generic sites that you can add listings to. And there's a little bit of a practitioner listing hack that I don't think too many people have heard of. But if you add a new listing on Yext for the practitioner, well, Yext will push it out to their entire list of 60 plus sites. So that is a way to distribute uh, practitioner listings. 
and help help get them ranking. The big, really important thing you have to remember is that do not have your practitioner listing compete with your practice listing. Make sure that you're using different categories. So dentistry is a great one. You got the practice, the primary category, you probably want that to be dentist. And then if you're adding the dentist, then obviously the category would be dentist. So make sure that you diversify if you can. I wouldn't, if in that scenario, if the dentist is just a dentist, I wouldn't make the practitioner listing because I wouldn't want it competing. But if the dentist is a pediatric dentist, which happens to be a category at Google, then I would make the dentist have the pediatric dentist category. And I would do the same with all the citations I build. If the dentist is an uh, orthodontist, for example, those braces, then I would make a practitioner listing with an orthodontist. As long as it's not competing, then it's an opportunity to rank for more terms with the practitioner listing. Um, okay, so you're making all of these listings. What page do you link your practice, your, your practitioner listing in Google My Business and in all the citations? What link do you put in there? Um, I would link them to the practitioner page. So if it's a practitioner uh, that just practices at one location, generally that location will have like, uh, you know, meet the team or about us, and then they'll have a page for each doctor or each, each lawyer or whatever. Link the practitioner listings uh, and the Google My Business one to that particular page. And it would be the same thing if, if the person worked at multiple clinics and you had multiple listings. Uh, link them to the practitioner page. If you don't have a practitioner page, you should you should make one. That's, that's what I would do. Uh, what if the practitioner no longer works at the office or clinic? This is such an annoying, sticky issue with practitioners. Sometimes you'll have this situation where um, let's say a law firm has started, had two primary founders. They started the law for, firm. It was, uh, and then one of the founders left. So they went to start their own firm. But the founder's practitioner list, and the, the person that left actually ranks like for a branded term. If you type in the, the firm name, their practitioner listing is the one that comes up in Google. In those cases, if the practitioner if the practitioner never, never claimed their listing it just happened to be ranking then you have some leverage you can get the listing claim and you can control it if the practitioner claimed it you're almost out of luck uh, it's going to be very hard unless you can convince the person to at least change the phone number or the address on their listing to like wherever they've moved to but you might be in a contentious situation and when you're in that contentious situation it's tough because google says that the owner of that listing isn't the firm the owner of that listing is the person because it's a listing about the person and, and that makes sense from their perspective. So it can be a, a sticky situation. You can try to work with Google support and see if you can get some help with it uh, depending on uh, the status. Sometimes listings are abandoned so you can get them unverified and Google My Business can, support can help you with that. So you could try to get it unverified but uh, uh, if you can't get, get anywhere with that then you're just uh, stuck trying to get the person to update the listing to have a different phone number and a different address. But one thing is don't try to mark those listings as closed. I would not do that because if you mark them as list, listing as closed, then people might search and be like, oh, this this uh, this medical clinic or this law law firm is out of business now. So you, you don't want to mark it as closed. That can really send the wrong message. And I'm sure I missed other things, but that's all I got to say about practitioner listings. So uh, some people out there know more about it than me. Uh, Joel Headley is one, so I'm, I'm expecting him to uh, to maybe uh, debate on some of the things that I've suggested here uh, in the comments. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions or comments, uh, I love the uh, the discussion in in the comments down below. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. See you next week. Hey, I'm back. Uh, Jesse asked a really important question that I felt deserved a follow-up video. So here I am with a follow-up video. The question is, uh, what phone number should you use on the practitioner listings? Should Can they be the main office line or do they need to be a unique number? I think that they need to be a unique number because you don't want to create NAP consistency issues by having the main practice have the same phone number and address as the practitioner listings. Uh, you can probably get away with it and, and you'll see sometimes that they rank, but the recommended practice is definitely to use a unique phone number on all of your practitioner listings. We created this uh, <clears throat> little spreadsheet here to kind of show you the optimal way that we recommend setting up each of your listings. 
So you've got your main business listing, which is the practice. So that's, that's all pretty basic. Company name, address, the main office line, uh, <clears throat> linking to linking to the home page or location pages if you have a bunch of location pages. And the category is what the business is. <clears throat> Practitioner one. So this is going to be the person's name with a title and credentials. So if it was a doctor, it would be Dr. Joe Appleby. Uh, credentials would be those, uh, you know, three letters at the end of people's names, Esquire maybe. Um, the the address of the practitioner listings, he is a practitioner at that address. You put that one and this should ideally be a unique phone number. You, If you don't have a unique phone number for the practitioners, you could get them through a service like CallRail and then you'd also get the benefits of uh, call tracking on those. What should we link the practitioner listings to? I think you should link them to a practitioner specific page. So it's a bio about that particular person and their specialty. It should talk about uh, what they do and uh, talk about the city and have lots of content on it to help that particular listing rank. Uh, the category should be different from the practices category so that the practitioner listings don't compete with the practice listing. Um, so a great example would be a law firm. So this law firm, the main listing would be a law firm. This practitioner would be a criminal lawyer, for example. And if you have another one, it's basically all the same, except ideally this would be a different category from this one. So if you have a criminal lawyer and a personal injury lawyer, so you've got a law firm and then two practice li practitioner listings. Um, it doesn't have to be. So if you've got five criminal lawyers at the law firm, you can still make practitioner listings for them and they can all still be cr criminal lawyers. One of them will just have a better chance of ranking. But the only, the only reason I say ideally here is because if you've got five criminal lawyers and they're kind of competing against each other. Um, and then of course there is the, the other type, which is a solar practitioner. And this is the uh, naming format. So it should be uh, brand slash company name, colon practitioner name. And then it'll be, at, it basically will mimic mostly uh, what this is. So uh, location address, main line number, the, the website URL, and uh, what the business is, primary category. All right. Well, I uh, hope that was helpful and we'll see you next week. Thanks everybody.